Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So we are using a new streaming software. So just give us a second, we're trying to get it set up. So let us know if you can hear us, you can see us, all of those fun things, because it's just something a little bit different because we scheduled the live rather than doing the live that we normally do. So uh, I think it's a little bit delayed, so I'm just waiting for it to catch up and things. And I know Greg's watching it on his end too. So. Just let me know if you can hear us and see us and those kinds of things, and then we'll get started. So um, welcome everyone. We have a fun technique Tuesday that I'm gonna be sharing with you. And I'm gonna be showing you how to add color to your cards without being an expert colorist, because I love to cope with color and those kinds of things, but I am no means an expert. Um, it's taken a lot of time to get to where I have got to. So I also want to show you some creative ways you can add color without having to do too much of that legwork as well. So, Linda says it looks and sounds good, so I think we're good. Um, so yes, yeah, so the comments are a little bit delayed, so I'm gonna get Greg to watch it on his end too, just to keep up with those comments to make sure that I can know if you have any questions and things. So if it takes me a minute to answer a question, that's why, because it's taken a minute for the stream to catch up uh, ahead of where we are live here. Um, so let me show you some samples I've been working on first of all. Um, so these are some samples we've been going with and um, this is one option. I'm going to show you how to do this today. This is a similar technique to this watercolor, um, but then I added, I don't know if I can capture it. Oh, there you go. You can see I added some extra shimmer to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And this was so simple to do. It's really easy. You're absolutely going to love it. And um, it's a really fun one. And then I'm also going to show you just like some background shadowing with blending. We'll see how many we can get through um, in our live. But here I added the sentiment down here with some sparkle. And then I added color using glitter as opposed to doing that. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for glitter piecing. I used some star confetti on here. So again, just another idea for adding some things in there too. I'm also gonna show you really quickly how to do this because this is the easiest technique, but look how beautifully this comes out. I absolutely adore the effect on this. It's absolutely, and it's so, so easy. You won't believe how easy this is to do. Um, you'll be shocked when I show you. Um, I also, this is what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. We have a Hachanda show. If you're in the UK, you can watch it at 10 a.m. UK time or you can watch it you know, 5 a.m. Eastern or your equivalent of, you can watch it online on hachanda.co.uk, H-O-C-H-A-N-D-A. -A. It's over on our Facebook and things. Greg's seen something he doesn't like. I can see, ah, he's looking for the goldfish. <laughs> so I'm gonna show people how to do this, but this one again is really, really easy. You can see those lovely um, images in the background there, and they're just stamped with water, and then I added the candy cane slices on here. This is the uh, Christmas cookies set from Alex Siberia. Oh, everything's falling. So this is this stamp set here. Um, and you can see I created this lovely background. And it uses our perfect blend cardstock on here too. And then I did this wrapped Christmas sentiments. I'm gonna do this one live on Hachanda as well. And I think I'm gonna do it on black just to show the difference. But again, I just added a little bow and a little simple sentiment under here just so you can see like, you know, it just adds that perfect little touch and it looks like a wrapped gift with wrapping paper. It's all shimmery and beautiful. So again, really, really easy. Any comments we need to catch up on, Greg? Because I think mine are a little bit behind. Greg, comments? You're on charge of comments because mine are behind. Greg had his uh, headphones yeah, in. I'm still sure on Everybody just says it looks great, saying hello, people from all over the place. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm also going to show on Hachanda tomorrow. If you missed it the other day, you can go and check the replay, or um, you can join, join me tomorrow morning. I'm going to show how to do this here. So let me press the right button. Um, this is the watercolor technique I'm going to show you on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on this card. But instead, I used archival ink, <coughs> excuse me, I used archival ink and spritzed it with isopropyl alcohol and you can turn your archival inks into alcohol inks. So really, really fun uh, things that you can do. And so I'm looking forward to sharing some of those on screen. I'm also gonna be showing you how to do a quick and simple card. Ali designed this one. 
but I love how it came out just with some double-sided adhesive and you can put that on there. So let's dive in to our first adding color technique. I'm gonna use my Misty just because it makes my life just a little bit easier. Um, but you can use uh, an acrylic block, you can use anything. And you're gonna be wanting to use that, easy, that modern Christmas watercolor stamp set. Um, I'll get Greg to start adding some Maker Forte links in the description for you. I just want to grab out my cart and the sheets and just bring the cart over to our craft area um, because it has everything we need in it. And I'm gonna grab out some of our card bases, or card fronts, I should say. Um, we'll want that in a second. And we literally just ran over here. I went and, I'll show you what I've been up to, actually. I've been doing some fun things. So we're gonna grab out just a piece of white cardstock. So these are our um, card bases. I'm gonna trim this in half and just use it as a card front because I'm not sure where my card fronts are. Um, but I went and got my nails done, and here you can see I have black, and then I have the Maker Forte matte uh, orange glitter. And then here I have orange, and then I have the black glitter, and a little bat on here as well. So I decided to do some Halloween nails for something fun. So this is our basic Maker Forte 110 pound cardstock. Greg, can you drop a link to Maker Forte in the comments? And you can also use the code HH15 for 15% off of your first purchase so you can add some savings in this is that modern christmas watercolor and that code is only good for hedgehog hollow followers so you're in the right place to get some extra savings um and i'm going to just put this on and what i did was i just kind of did it slightly off the edge you can see here it's not perfectly on um and then we're going to pick some colors now you can use any dye based inks. I picked uh, Lucky Clover and Candied Apple. You can also pick, I have another nice combination in my little stack here, um, Forest Moss and Festive Berries goes really well together. And I'm going to, actually we'll just mix it up. We'll do Forest Moss and Candied Apple just to have something different in here. And I want to share with you some tips because the one thing you can find of course is red and green make mud, which is not fun. Um, so I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to spritz it with water. Now you notice how I've only kind of put it in three areas. So it's kind of at like the 11, 2 and 7 o'clock of if you were doing it by clocks. Um, and I'm going to stamp this out. And then we're going to clean us out. And the reason I spritzed it is because this is designed to kind of look a little bit more watercolory. If you want it to look really fine, you can do that too. That's really easy. I'm just going to give it a dry off with my apron and um, you know if you want to do more of like the tight and the fine you can absolutely do that I'm trying to kind of match in where I didn't do but what I tend to do is like just kind of offer it up a little bit take a look take some off of here add a bit more on this end so it's not an exact science at all take a bit off here add a bit on here and I also don't mind that it's um, going to slightly go over some of the pieces. And you can stamp as many times as you need to. You can do once, you can spritz, add a little bit of water. And if it you know, stamps one over the other, that's fine too. So you can see how you get this really pretty wreath effect. And we'll choose a sentiment for the center. Um, I'm gonna use the wrapped um sentiments and maybe i don't know if this one will fit let's see it would fit if i had the whole thing on there if i heat embossed it that would fit perfectly um some are more religious some are not i'm going to do this one in here you can see on this one i just did hello winter like a very clean simple one this one i'm going to do oh come let us adore him now you could heat emboss this or you can just stamp it out you can decide I'm going to stamp this out with a little bit of black and I'm going to use, I think I just grabbed my Distress Ink black so we could use that. Like so. And I'm going to stamp that out. 
And so you can see how easy that was. Now I'm gonna show you how to add that extra little bit of sparkle because I think that just kind of adds the finishing touch to this card. Um, I'm going to grab out, I have my little water brush here and normally I work on a scrap piece of like an easy clean mat or something, but I left that back at home. So I'm gonna use a piece of that acetate packaging that you get with all of your stamps. It's gonna work perfectly. And we're looking for our, uh, you wanna use a kaleidoscope powder. So these are the kaleidoscope powders um, and they come in a variety of different colors. And there's ones that are white and things like that. Um, the one that I like to use for this technique is called Alien. And so I'm gonna grab that couple of those so I can show them to you. So this is Alien and this is how it comes. And a little bit goes a really long way. There's lots of different ways you can use this. You can put it in a spray and make a, you know, a pretty spritz. You can, um, you think you can add it into an aqua paint. I could put it straight in here and make a wink Stella that's there the whole time. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit out and put it onto my acetate. You really don't need much. You see how tiny of an amount that is. And then I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't get it everywhere. You can also apply it the same way uh, I've shown you in previous videos and things as well. There are lots of different options. And then I'm just gonna take my Aqua Painter, put out a dot of water because that's all I'm gonna need for this whole thing. And I'm gonna start mixing this. I'm gonna add a little bit more in here. And then I'm just gonna start painting it on. Now, because these are dye-based inks, it's gonna activate that color in there too. You see how it's kind of pulling that color together. So from really fine. And so I'm just kind of being gentle, particularly where the two colors come together. But you just wanna go and add that. And as I'm doing it, I'm adding this beautiful shimmer to my pieces. But the nice thing is there's so many different techniques you can do with these same powders. And it depends whether you're putting it on black or white as to kind of what interference you're gonna get. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more of my powder in. Uh, any questions, Greg? Uh, Lisa Fitzpatrick received her uh, Make Forte package yesterday. Yay! She's really excited for the weekend to play with it. Yeah, Lisa got some cool stuff. I remember packing that one. <laughs> so I'm just kind of finishing off. Just like this. And then just that little bit of extra sparkle. And so now when it's finished, you can just about catch it on him, but it's really, really shimmery. And it's so pretty. And you can see how I just mounted this up I mounted it here with a piece of the telephone box cardstock and our white 110 pound card base. And then I added some extra little dots of um, glue. I'll show you how I did those because I did. I have a neat little trick that makes it super simple. I could really do with some kitchen towel up here. I have my uses. He has his uses. Greg, can you add to our list as well stuff to bring to the studio? We need some archival black. So this is my little tip. So you can take any Nouveau drop. I really like using the clear because I don't know if you know, but it's a really strong adhesive. And then it has a really nice fine nozzle on it too. And if I miss a bit, it doesn't matter because it just looks like a little bit of accent that was meant to be there. And so I'm just like, you can see I'm just kind of dotting here there everywhere and then you can decide what color glitter you want to do but i like the amount of control i get by using a nouveau drop and so i'm going to use our biodegradable moon dust so it's completely eco-friendly we call it turtly awesome because it doesn't hurt those turtles and uh it's made of cellulose so it biodegrades colorful dimensions 1014 asks uh, can one add foil on top as well? You could, if you have the, um, there you go, so there's our berries. If you have the foil ink pad, you could foil on top. If you add um, some of the, 
There we go. If you add some of like the foiling uh, mediums and things, you could foil some of those details in there too. Um, so yeah, you could absolutely foil and do some fun things. Uh, I'm just trying to get my lid back on without making too much of a mess. There we go. Lola City fell in love with the alien powder, so she got two lots of it. The alien is my favorite. It's I probably the, the one I use the most. It is really pretty. I did have some swatches. I'm in a total mess. I just got too much craft stuff on my table. So it's every crafter ever, I think. Um, but I do have some swatches because you put it on white like this and it has this beautiful, oh, helps if you can see. Um, it has this beautiful shimmer, but then you put it on black and it like super, super pops. I'm not sure if any of the cards I made, I used it. Um, normally I have all my things lined up while I'm like, I think I do. Here you go, this is the alien. So this is what it looks like on black. This is the alien on the bats and on the edge. You can see it's nice and green. And then when you do it on the white, you just have that really pretty shimmer in there. So, um, yeah. Angie asked me, are we adding the kaleidoscope powder to the water and then painting that on? Yeah, exactly. You could even put like the tip of a craft spoon of it inside your aqua painter and then just have it in there permanently and it'll dispense like your own homemade wink of Stella. Um, but I like to just kind of mix it in and make different effects and things. The Nebula also looks amazing. Um, and we have an exclusive color pre-launching tomorrow on Hachanda. And that also looks um, beautiful too. So that is how to add color, which is a little bit of watercolor and then adding some kaleidoscope powders over the top. And the nice thing about these powders is you can do those techniques with the color hive like this and then, you know, putting it on and then or you can do something like that and paint with it you can add it to a spray you can add it to an aqua painter so there's tons of different ways i can show you to use these which is so much fun so now i want to grab out just a piece of regular cardstock i had some i was just cutting so again i'm going to trim this down to what i call a matting layer so it's five inches by three and three quarters this. And then we're going to grab back out our Misty. And I'm going to use this really pretty poinsettia set from Alex Siberian. The nice thing about this poinsettia set, about the Christmas cookies you saw that I used for the water stamping, this one here, and also her ornament stamp set, which is the one I used for this, but it actually contains some really cute critters and things in it too. Um, you get an inspiration card with them all that shows you how to use that stamp set in a unique way. So there's some fun ideas in, that, in those. So they're well worth getting. And they just come with the stamp set. You don't have to do anything. They're a free little bonus from us to share with you how to do that as well. Um, so let's add this in here. My sticky grid's not quite sticky, which is why I've been using a little bit of tape. So I'm going to do this and I want it to hang off the edge. So that's why I pre-cut my cardstock so I can kind of work out where. You see on here how I had it hanging off the edge a little bit? It just adds a fun element to it. So I'm going to pick this up. And don't forget, if you want to grab any of these things, you can also use that code HH15 for 15% off your first order. Um, so the what I'm going to do again is the same kind of thing. I'm going to use festive berries this time. And you just want to go in... And if you have ink cubes, it's even easier than doing this, but you can see I just kind of tilt my pad in the appropriate direction, just like this. And kind of just going in, a little bit ambidextrous. And this is a flower too. Now you could do masking and all kinds of things, but I want to show you the quick, easy ways. If you get some somewhere you don't want it, just use your finger and wipe it off easy get a piece of kitchen towel wipe it off i really don't pay you can see i'm not paying too much attention i just want to make sure i have the majority of my flour inked no spritzing needed just stamp it down as normal you can see press like this and that's our first part you're probably wondering what on earth is she doing because that's not how that's supposed to look so bear with me there's a process there's method to the madness i always tell greg that there's method to the madness you don't I'm look convinced. Sure <laughs> look, I made one earlier and it worked great. So now I'm going back in again and I'm adding the green 
in the same way, but this time just to the foliage. So anywhere where there's leaves, pretty much mostly around the edge. And I'm a little bit creative with how I put my pad down. And again, just use your fingers if you've got it in the wrong place, it's okay. And if you want to like feather anywhere out because you don't want a harsh line like that, just dab your finger in and then it won't be a harsh line. And of course you can go in as many times as you need to. This bit is not sensitive in any way. So I can see like down here, I need a bit more on this leaf. And I need a little bit more up here on this leaf. And that should kind of do it, I think. Just press out down here. And I want a smidgen, just a smidgen, more red on that outline. And that's what I did. And you can see how it comes out. So really, really easy. Um, easiest technique in the world. I'm going to wipe this off. And move this to the side. And now we can do the magic. So again, I'm going to grab back that same aqua painter. I'm giving it a wipe off on my apron because that's as good as cleaning gets here. And then I like to start with my red first. But this is how easy. Look, if I just scribble, and I'm literally scribbling, you can see there's no techniques that you need to apply here. And you can pull the color from that line. There is so much ink on your page already. You don't need to add any more. If you, you know, get to a point and you feel it's dry, you can, you can, absolutely you can. If there's a bit like here, this is supposed to be a green leaf, and you don't want it to be a red leaf, then you can go in and dab a bit of green. I'll show you. This is how my dabbing a bit of green goes in. Dab it on there, add it on, dab, add, dab, Right. You can see, not a lot, you know, it's a really, really easy technique. This is what I love about this technique. And it just looks amazing by the end of it. Your hand and a piece of kitchen towel are going to be your best friends on this. And I'm just going over and adding all those leaves. So you don't have to be an expert colorist. You don't need to do anything. And if you have a stamp that has loads of detail in it, that will also make your life easy because there'll be a more, even more ink on the page and they'll have told you exactly where to add that depth and shadow and it all will be done for you. That's how simple it is. And clean off on the back of my hand, move to my green. How's it going over there, Greg? We'll be on her channel tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll be on her channel tomorrow at 10 a.m. UK time, which is 5 a.m. Eastern. Yes, Greg does have to be up at that time. Yeah. And um, you can come join us. I got some fun demos. I gave you a sneak peek. And we've got some bundles. We've got some pre-release things on there. You can order from the US too. You don't have to be in the UK. But I know with the UK, it helps because there's no customs duty and there's, the shipping is less or you can sign up for their shipping program and things. So that's cool. So that is how easy that technique was to do. I mean, that was the easiest coloring I think you will ever learn. I think it's the best one I definitely ever found. And then I did the same thing again. I added some fun things here with the glitter. So I used my Nouveau drops in here. And then to add the background, again, easy technique. Use supplies you've already got, or if you want these exact ones, I would recommend them. They're great, I love them. Might be slightly biased, but um, I just take this. This is the Starry Night stencil. Alex Siberia one, stick it down on the back, and I don't mask. I haven't got time for fussy cutting and masking and all that stuff. God, no. All I do is I take a piece of tape and I put it over the stars or the pieces of the stars that I don't want my stuff to be on. Literally just the edges like this. So like this one. This one, these, and these, that's it. And then I take my blending brush. And for this, I used um, the Gina K Amalgam in Whisper. I wish someone, hint, hint, Craig, would produce some colors of ink 
that are just like a hint of colour when you're blending like this. I really struggled to find something that was literally a whisper, but I wanted some colour. I didn't really want greys, but um, grey was all I had. So some colours like this would be really, really nice. And then when you're done, you lift it up and you've got that lovely starry background. And it's rather than just having a plain white at the top, it just adds that little bit of extra detail, which I think makes all the difference to that finished uh, project on there. So again, easy way to add color, um, easy way to do a background uh, paper or stencil without having to do any effort whatsoever. You saw how easy that was to do. Um, I mean, it's just, it's so simple and it looks awesome. So I love how that one came out and this is how I mounted it up. This is the Mercury Metallic Red Cardstock. These are the red and gold biodegradable, totally friendly, totally awesome glitters. And then this is one of our simple sentiments. They all come pre-printed just like this. And you get different varieties. You get the black on the white, the white on the black, and then you also get smaller versions and things. And I just cut out the Merry Christmas, popped it on there with a little bit of foam, and I was all done. I mean, again, just super, super easy and you could bulk produce these cards and things and they look amazing just like that. So that's how that one came out. Um, so other ways you can add color. Let's talk about this one because this again is a great technique. It uses that same Starry Night stencil. So this time I want a piece of, oh, here's one of these cards I was telling you about. These are those pretty inspiration cards. So if you order Oh What Fun, that's this stamp set which made this card here. You get that one if you get the christmas cookies you get this one here and if you order the poinsettia that i just used you get this one here and of course you can mount those into cards you can frame them all those kinds of things um, so lots of different ways you can use them so now we're going to use our perfect blend cardstock so that's regular cardstock let's just sort through our pile of crafty stuff um, Okay. here's a piece of perfect blend so the difference with the perfect blend is although it's white and it's a very nice crisp bright white um it has a little bit of a sheen to it just a tiny bit you can see it's not glossy i would call it a sheen so for this card i went back to that same stencil that starry night starry star oh my goodness christmas stars why can't i talk this evening um so I'm just going to peel off this tape and I reuse this tape too. So, you know, I'm not throwing it away. I am just putting it to the side. Um, Melissa gets to go home. Oh, Melissa, I'm so pleased you're going to get to go home. Um, I hope your daughter's doing better. I know I've missed some comments and things. I'll catch up on those afterwards. So Melissa was doing hollow days, Greg, from um, the hospital with her daughter. Oh. So uh, we've all kind of followed along. Um, so I hope things are going better. Um, so same thing, I used the same Whisper ink, and the nice thing with Perfect Blend is it has a special coating on it that allows your ink to stay wetter just a little bit longer. So you can blend colors together, you can do some really fun blending techniques. That stamping with water I did on this, and it's a little bit stronger than just doing it on paper because um, you get all of those kind of uh, different techniques and things in there too. So I'm just going over this really simple i'm all about the simple cards right now we're trying to unpack the house and the studio and ship out your maker forte orders we spend quite a lot of time doing that every morning which is really good fun because i love seeing the names and seeing what you bought and those kinds of things um so that's how easy that part was and it looks really pretty nice and soft and then i took my misty of course put my card stuck in and then I used that Sleigh Ride uh, stamp set. Let me find it under this pile of stuff. I definitely, I had it because we made stuff with it. Hang on. I'm on the floor. Here we go. This is the stamp set. So this is how it comes. It's an Alex Siberia. It's a four by six. And I just think it's a really nice so it's called Slay Bouquet, is its official name. And so I'll get Greg to drop a link to the uh, Make a Forte store in there. You can go grab these. Uh, you can now search by category so you can find exactly what you're looking for. And you can try doing some of these techniques. 
Um, if I had to pick, I would choose a couple of the kind of like the basics, as I call them. Stamp set, there's some really great Christmas ones, um, including, um, let me think what else we've got. The Bold Holiday Sentiments has been really popular. I'll show you that one in a second. Um, and the Dear to Me has been really popular. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to stamp out. Just like that. And I actually stand, ended up stamping it just a couple of times, like really bold it up because I wanted a rich black um, as opposed to, you know, like a supple black. Grable knows I'm not very supple, so. That's true. <laughs> so you can see in there how I did that. And then it was adding the colours that were the really fun part. So these are the um, different colours of sugar sparkles or glitters currently available. So you really can pick whatever colour you want to fill. I'll show you the one I did earlier. So this is my finished one. And I finished it off with Stormy Sky Cardstock, which is metallic. This is the Nebula. I stamped with the uh, Colour Hive like this. And then added that on came out really pretty and then I just mounted it with some of the mercury the British racing green and the eclipse which of course you can tell Greg named British racing green My favorite color. Yes. that is his favorite color so um, the bold holiday sentiments is this one here this one has been really really popular um, people have loved playing with this they've also loved the dear to me uh, we used that in a video the other day and I'll do another video on it soon you get this stamp and then you get the matching stencil that comes as a set and so you can stamp one out and then, you know, ink blend the other. And again, just some really fun techniques that you can do in there. So um, let's go back to this one, though, because we're going to use my favorite tool and grab it. We need use confetti stars. And then you can really pick what other colors of glitter you want to use. Um, I'm going to stick to the bio ones. And there is a bundle. You can get all the bio glitters together, too. And... Um, I'm going to grab just some Nouveau Drap. So in the middle of just a tiny amount, the small stars, I put just a tiny bit of Nouveau Drops. And I opened up my confetti stars. And usually a few stick to the lid, so that makes it nice and easy. And I just pick them up and put them down. And this has a wax tip on it. It's resharpenable, so if you... Um, want it really nice and sharp. I like mine a little bit blunt because I find I have a bigger surface area to pick things up with, but it's sticky, so it'll pick things like this up. And then on this end, you have a craft pick, so if you need to poke or hold or whatever. Um, you can also fix it when it breaks off. Yeah, you just put it in a pencil sharpener, or if you hold it like this for a few seconds, like 30 seconds, you can mold it back into a point. But I kind of like that little bit dulled down because I find it's easier to use. Then I added things like some red into the berries. So again, I just did one color at a time. A little bit here, a little bit on the candy cane, just kind of like dots of it. And I put a little bit of red here. And then I grabbed my red glitter, tipped it all over. And then I put it back. And I'm gonna now, it's going to stick, if anything's wet, it's going to stick on there, um, but you can get rid of it afterwards, and I'm going to show you how. Let's just get all of our colours in, and then I'll share another little tip with you. So, for this one, I'm going to put some gold in here, and some in here, and some here, and some in these bigger stars, so I'm just using that. And I'm going to do just a smidge here. And these little, like, I don't know, welded bratty things. I'm sure there's a technical term, Greg, probably dying inside that I just called them that, but whatever. So, again, just sprinkle it all over. Dot this on. I'm going to give it a flick from the back just because it makes it easier. And then you can see how this is starting to come together. So here, you can see how I've added all that color. Now you see how it's stuck up here? You can see that there. Well, this is how easy it is to get rid of. Wait for it, <coughs> excuse me, really you wanna wait for it to be dry. 
but just take your cleanup brush very gently you can see even though it's wet I'm just being really gentle and anywhere where you have a little bit of cling you can see I've added I kind of spread some there because it's not dry but anywhere I kind of like to wait till it's dry because I don't make such a mess but you can see you can start to pick that uh, glitter off and if you would this was my card I'll show you exactly how to fix it because we all make mistakes I would take this and I would trim this piece off because I have to trim some off anyway for it to be the right size trim now of course normally I'd wait for it to be dry and I would uh, put it inside my paper trimmer but it's not dry so we can't do that So I'm being really adventurous and trying to trim this while it's still wet by trimming it from the reverse. And then you can see how that starts to look. I would add my simple sentiment down at the bottom here and this little smudge up here if you have a sand eraser or if you have an adhesive eraser um, or a mechanical eraser, which I don't seem to have yet in the studio. I guess that's another thing I need to bring over. Oh, I do have this one. This one might work. It's a pretty good eraser. This one. This one's pretty good. There we go. That's taken it away pretty much. And it will take all of those boo boos away, and you can mount it up so it will look just like this. So there's another way to add color. You can see you just go on like this, and you can add some really fun colors to your pieces. So again, just a really really easy way to add color by piecing in glitter so there's three ways to add color you can also add it with kaleidoscope powder i did this in a video the other day you can check those videos out i also did uh, how to do the watercolors like this uh, like this and i'll be doing that on hachanda tomorrow and i'll also be showing you how to use a stencil to do things like kaleidoscope powders so lots of tips and techniques come in there too and you can also use the confetti on things like this to pep up you can use the clay slices and the confettis on here there's confetti and clay and glitter and clay slices and this is some of the glitter as well so lots of different ways to use those too so be sure to join us on hachanda tomorrow at uh, 5 a.m eastern 10 a.m uk time 11 o'clock euro time all those things but i hope you enjoy three ways to add color so let's do a quick recap we did Piecing glitter in like this, and of course you could keep going and adding things in. And using the Nouveau Drops, I find it's just a really easy way to get it nice and fine. And Nouveau Drops, clear Nouveau Drops are a really great adhesive too. Then we did stamping with our Distress inks and our dye inks, and then we just spread it with an aqua pen. And again, you can you know add those details, and I showed you how to do really easy backgrounds just using a stencil. So I used the poinsettia and the uh, Christmas stars on there and Greg's dropped a link to the store and you can use the code HH15, there's also a link down below. And then this is the other option we did. So we stamped and spritzed and then we just spread it out a bit more and added some of that alien powder to really give it some zing. You can see um, here, look how just how pretty that looks when you're done. Here's another version. Again, it depends on the colors. This one looks really modern. This one looks a little bit more classic, so you can just choose your colors. And then you can see again, I switched it up on this one. And here's another one. So we, we actually, on this one, we stenciled the whole background and then just stamped over the top because you can see, you don't even notice. And those stars happen to match perfectly. Alex designed it so they match in so nicely as well. So I hope you enjoyed going live with us, doing something a little bit different for a change. Do hop on over to makeaforte.com. Do come and join us tomorrow on her channel. You can tune in remotely. You can watch it on Freeview or FreeSat or any of those kinds of things in the UK. And don't forget also your gem grubber picker, picky uppy pokey tour. We, we do have a name, but I don't know. We need a more kind of like sassy name for it. But that's a really great tour to pick up confetti, clay slices, move things around, poke out dyes, all those kinds of things. It's my favorite tour and it's so pretty. So thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell. And make sure you're following Maker Forte on Facebook. It's maker.forte. It's maker.forte on Instagram. 
because we'll be having more lives like this Technique Tuesday. Um, so you'll get an invite to those if you're a follower of the page. Make sure you're following, not just liking. And also, if you go to makeaforte.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's a newsletter down there. We send exclusive codes, content, reminders of things like this, all those kinds of things. You can go check that out over at makeaforte.com. M-A-K-E, M-A-K-E-R-F-O-R-T-E.com. So thanks for joining me. Have a great evening. I'm going to go prepare, make my table look great. And I hope to see some of you tomorrow on Hachanda. Have a great evening, everyone. Happy crafting. Bye.